Hello everyone. So tomorrow Saturn stations direct and Mars and Aries going retrograde also squares the Saturn within a day. So this is what we like to talk about. What's interesting is the Saturn as it moves direct is heading straight into Aquarius. So it's like bye bye Capricorn, hello Aquarius. This is like the the, the ending of that season finale where you're about to kind of get the foreshadowing for like, oh, this is how this season's actually like leaving that cliffhanger for the thing that's gonna happen in the next season. Like these next few months really are this really powerful and potent transition time into this new Aquarian phase with Jupiter and Saturn moving into Aquarius. And then Mars moving into, you know, Taurus with Uranus. It's just a big shift happening. So this movement of Saturn moving direct in Capricorn is the beginning of this shift. It's like a new level, a new experience, a new expression within that. So we'll speak about this. First Saturn moving direct right now in Capricorn with Mars squaring it. It's interesting that this is happening at the very end of Yom Kippur. And so in Judaism, Yom Kippur is known as the Day of Atonement. And I wanted to share a little bit about that because Saturn, of course, is like the judge, right? And they call Yom Kippur Judgment Day. And it really comes down to the question, who's judging you? And the answer is you. And often within the Judeo-Christian cosmology, there's a very strong notion of guilt and sin rooted in this idea that like we've done something wrong and we got to atone for this thing that we've done wrong. And if we've atoned for it, then we'll be better. And then we'd be judged positively by some external figure outside of ourselves. And I want to just really present a perspective on this idea of sin and judgment that's really, interestingly, very relevant to this particular station of Saturn. In A Course in Miracles, it describes sin as not this thing that you've done wrong, but a mistake in thinking. That the mistake being where we perceive the things of the world as having some sort of influence or effect upon our sense of well-being. That something out there can hurt us, that something out there can make us happy. And when we live in that way, when that mistake in thought is prevalent, we live a life where we are very much vulnerable and at whim to the things that happen, to the things that come and go. And as per Saturn and Capricorn, the tendency is to look at the world, look at our body, look at our relationships, look at our finances, look at our social situations, and to say, okay, these things are, are, are happening, they're going wrong, or they're challenging, and, and to sense that our own well-being, our own sense of self, our own esteem, our own confidence in self, will really be affected by how the things of the world are unfolding. And the lesson that's really offered to us in the Capricorn Saturn realm, and this is emphasized when Saturn moves, anytime Saturn moves direct, this is like, it, it can feel like I don't know where I'm going or what's happening, but there's like a new momentum and that's a new confidence that's being invited to claim more authority and agency. And so what's invited, really what's the point of the Saturn Capricornian energies is to learn how to use the world and engage the things of time and space and form and structure as a way to serve our deserving inherent worth and value and purpose to live in alignment and joy and wellness here together with one another on this earth in this life the saturn thermostat saturn's a thermostat right so it's like we learn to discipline our minds to discipline our thoughts it's not so much a discipline that manifests in the things that I'm doing, but it will express in that way. The essence of it is a disciplining that occurs on the internal level of how we're choosing to think about our life. If we know what our goal is, if our goal is alignment and joy that is stable, you know, Saturn, you build a building and you take your time and you put every stone in its proper place. And what happens? You have a solid structure. You built it to code, it can withstand all kinds of things, but even better than a structure. When we take the time to discipline our mind, we build an internal structure, a stable joy, a stable wellness. This is something that I truly, truly believe is possible for all of us. 
and that this evolutionary journey, this soul path that we're on is just affording us all the time and space that we need to learn how to use time and space for our deeper potential and purpose so that we're not living in this way where we're, we're trying to find our happiness through making the structures work. It's like the materialism that we need to heal. The idea that the external world has value and power and importance over us. And these things that I'm speaking are not like super existential or woo woo or difficult. It really says we need to take that responsibility to cultivate ourselves. And this basically says right now, what is the work in front of you? Where can you take responsibility? Where are we called to step up and show up and really Saturn, self-reflect, look at our conditioning, see where we're called to cultivate a new level of maturity and presence in life, whereas we may have otherwise been smaller. Saturn is both the child that does not yet know to look both ways before crossing the street, and Saturn is also the parent that knows better. And so where we have been that child, now it's time to grow up. So as Saturn builds this momentum, it is a process of us starting to get that clarity to see, okay, this is what I'm working with here. And moving straight into Aquarius, like, trust me, there's a paradigm shift, right? Next year is going to be very different than this year. I mean, that goes without saying in general, tomorrow is going to be very different than today. But just with all the shift into the Aquarian, into the fixed axis, it's really about liberation and waking up and moving to a new expression of possibility. Mm -hmm. But we need to do that Capricornian foundational work now. Um, would you like to share a little bit about the Mars square? Yeah, there's, uh, there's two important pieces that about the Saturn station and moving towards Aquarius. One is that it's gonna make the first contact that Saturn is really making is Mars retrograde square to Saturn. And the second, which maybe we'll touch on later in the video, is that Mars will be separating from Pluto. And this is going to be the last time that Mars will be, you know, sort of in the territory, the three degrees of Pluto. Pluto is also stationing direct next week. We'll mm. do another video on that, but um, later on in the week. So these two particular transits are really important. and. Mars square to Saturn, this is the second pass of it. So we're getting a Mars retrograde, a more internal, deep, deep excavation of our will, our force, our power, and thus more um, internal reactivity. And Saturn, you know, our command, our mastery, and our sense of um, inner critic. And you know, the, the thing that I've been realizing lately is the degree to which judgment, anger, rejection comes up in me. These are all coming from internal complexes, structures that um, often are messages that we receive very mm. young or links to really core and foundational stories. And this particular square is really intensifying also during a time when um, there's a full moon in Aries. Like the, the degree to which we may feel challenged by the reactions that are coming up in us. And, you know, our anger, um, there's a line in the course that says anger is not justified in any form. And I literally have been meditating on this particular line for the last several months since Mars has been in Aries in particular because there are so many ways in which I believe that it's justified. Oppression, um, racism, you know, systemic things that are happening within the world that are creating tremendous suffering. The, the validation, the belief that those are rightful, you know, that I'm justified in my anger. Um, and also intimately in relationship the ways in which I feel like my wounds, my beliefs, my feelings are justified um, are so deeply challenged. And I feel like the ultimate purpose of any challenge like that is to bring this shit, you know, bring this stuff to the surface, to bring it up, to be healed, to be seen and to be expressed, you know, and Mars unexpressed um, 
is, you know, internal violence, mm. um, collapse, anger, and rage turned internally can become depression. So the, the Mars-Saturn dynamic, this particular ch choice of ours to see, one, to, um, to see the truth that our anger is not justified in any form, that, that sees our life and everything through the lens of forgiveness. And while that might feel far away in the midst of this square, to begin to take self-responsibility, self-discipline, um, and really tune in to a much slower, deeper way of coming to expression with these particular energies or finding ways to express that are healthy, mm -hmm. that are self-respecting, that are um, of the recognition that anger in me projected outward creates harm and hurt in others. And thus, it only hurts me more. Um, that thing of, you know, we're not separate. It's impossible to be angry at someone else and not be experiencing that within yourself. And that's what we that's what we have the capacity to heal. So Yeah, beautiful. The Saturn Mars interface. And this is by the this is hit two. There's gonna be one more at the very end of this year, next year it's gonna happen. I guess it's gonna happen in Aquarius. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's gonna happen in Aquarius and Taurus. You know, there are really three general responses. One is the the child immature expression, right? So the there's that impulse and then the Saturn will you know, the outer world is responsible for me. So I'm going to be like a child to a parent and just express emotion and raw energy. Then there's like the suppressed internalized adult that doesn't really know what to do with all this rage and anger, mm -hmm. you know? And when we say, you know, this, this absolute teaching, anger is never justified in any form. It should never be taken as like, well, let me suppress it. <laughs> That's not doing anything about it. It's like that teaching is actually, I find pointing us to a deeper understanding that there is no real valid source of attack in truth you know to fully grasp that is is actually true freedom so the suppression of it doesn't help either but one way we can read mars saturn is mastering raw energy mm. it's here it's arising anger lust rage any kind of instinctual impulse the Saturn question then becomes, how am I going to work with that? And Saturn wants reflection. What's this teaching me about me? And what do I have to work on to cultivate so that I'm not suppressing, I'm not shutting down? That, that internal violence does create so much sickness and depression. And that can be a, a real issue right now with this, with this transit. But rather so that it is actually being used as 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 fodder for self wisdom and for self knowledge and thus constructive action constructive integration in one's life so that's our um little little piece on this saturn mars mm. and we just wish everyone um a very beautiful non-judgment day and as we pass through yom kippur um you know the word for for repentance in hebrew is teshuva and teshuva the root of the word is uh, lashevet or shuv, which is also where the word Shabbat or the Sabbath comes from. That word actually means return. And it also means sit, like shin, bet. Those root letters both mean to sit and to return. And so the word for repentance, if you actually look at the Hebrew word itself and what it actually says, it's an act of returning. And I find it really beautiful and meaningful to reflect on that vibration, that returning and sitting share the same meaning. They, sh they share the same letters because it says something about what returning is. When we're returning, we're returning to correct mindedness. We're walking on this path of thinking something and you stop, you sit, you slow down. Shabbat is Shabbat, shev, sitting. It's a day of rest. You're undoing not doing, unwinding, right? So you do that and you, we return through the stopping, through the slowing down. So I just really um, bless all of us with that peacefulness and that permission to actually slow down during this time so we can return and know that time is on our side. In fact, it's here for us. Lastly, I just want to make a little soft release, a soft announcement. 
I'm going to be launching um, the Heart and Soul Centered Astrology Complete Training Program in January of 2021. So this is going to start with Module 1. It's going to be eight weeks of just the basics. This is for you if you are a total beginner. This is for you if you've been studying astrology and you want solid guidance and support to go deeper. Every week we'll have um, audio, um, video material, several videos that you can study on your own through my Teachable site. And then a weekly Q&A with a little workbook with review questions and a forum that's always available throughout the week. So that's module one, just the introduction, evolutionary stages, the zodiac, the astronomy of the needle chart, elements, modes, quadrants, all the important basics. But what's exciting about this for me is I'm going to be teaching all of this with the intention to bring out my full medicine, to share this work in the understanding that astrology itself is a path, is a map that really reveals the unraveling of our own awakening and returning to the love that we are. And that's how I see the chart. It's really just signifying what is the karmic journey? What is the unraveling of consciousness in its self-remembering? And so I'm looking forward to this opportunity to tune in deeply to the teachings and create a space where we can learn together. So this is my first official soft announcement. If you are interested, if this is something you'd like to know more about, please do let me know. And as always, feel free to share your comments and your questions in the comments below.